Hello, everybody. Welcome to Level Pixel Level. I hope that everyone out there is doing well, healthy, and safe. And today I'm just going to show you how to rig a universal joint in Blender. This is just how I rig it. Uh, I tend to rig it in a simple way with just about four or five bones and two constraints. So let's get right to it. I'm going to click Add Armature. And it's going to make this armature right here for me. By the way, you can go to my Gumroad account to grab all of these files from the beginning and the end. Uh, they'll have my whole process there as well, and you can download those for free. I'm just going to uh, duplicate this bone down to here. It doesn't really matter where it is right now. It can be arbitrary. I'll click back on this one. I'll just do Shift D and hit Scale. Now I want to scale it up from its origin point. I'll just turn on X-Ray. If I scale right now, it's going to scale from the center of the bone. But if I go to Individual Origins, it'll scale up from that location there. And I'm just going to do Shift D again, and I'm just going to grab this up in space. Okay, so I have a fairly simple rig here. I just want one last thing. I'm going to grab this bone here. I'm going to duplicate it and just rotate it 90 degrees on the X. So I have that right there. Before I go to pose mode, let's just parent some things up. This bone right here is going to be parented to this one. I'll do Control P, keep offset. I'll parent this one to this one here. I'll do Control P, keep offset. This one here, I'll parent to the smaller one here. I'll do Control P, keep offset. And lastly, I'll grab this one up here. And I'm going to click on this one way down here and do Control P, keep offset. That one's going to go right down to the bottom right there. That's sort of my God node down there, my root node. Let's actually rename these really quick. So this one, I'll just rename it to root. This one, I'm just going to rename it to lower. This one, I'll name it to pivot. This one, I'll name it to upper. And this one up here, I'll name it to point. So I'm going to flip to pose mode now. I'm going to do a couple things. I'm going to select everything. I'm going to do control R and just set the rotation mode to XYZ Euler, just to make it easier as we go. So if I move this one down here, it's going to move everything. And this one is going to move just these three. And that's where my rotation is going to be. So let's just parent some things up here really quick. I'm just going to turn off lock object modes. I'm going to select the lower piece here and shift click on my rig again, just parent it to that guy right there. Click bone. And I'm just going to go to x ray mode for this. I'll click on the pivot here, shift click on the rig, and I want to parent this to this smaller bone right here with uh, control P, bone. Then I'll click on the upper piece here, click on the rig again, and just parent it to this piece right here, this um, larger joint right here, do control P, bone. Okay, so let's just look at what we have for our rig right now. So if I go to pose mode, I'll just flip to a wireframe, make this a bit easier to see. This moves this entire thing. I have this one here that I can rotate on the x-axis, which rotates both of these pieces, and this one rotates on the y-axis. We want to constrain these up to this one, though, so they always point at it. I'm going to click on this point one up here and shift-click down to this one down here. I'm going to do Control shift c to add a constraint with target, and I'm going to do a locked track. A lot of people get confused with the locked track constraint. It's actually quite simple. 2 means it's going to point the y-axis to that target. Z is the axis you're going to rotate around. Let me show you what I mean. If I turn on axis, you see that my bone is pointing on the y up to this joint up here. And I have it set on the constraint to lock to the Z axis, which is this axis right here, which is right here as well. Meaning that that Y is always going to rotate around the Z here to point to this bone. Let's try it out. So when I grab this and move it on the Y axis, nothing happens. I want to move it on the X axis, it's rotating around the local bone Z axis. But that's wrong, because you can see it happening right here. So I want to flip this from Z to X. So when I come back here and move this like this, it's just rotating really nicely on that axis, but it won't rotate on any other axis while it's pointing at that bone. That's perfect. With this selected, I'm going to shift click on this bigger bone here and do the exact same constraint. I'm going to do a locked track again. This time we are going to leave it on the Z by default with the Y axis it's going to point to. So watch this. As I move this here, it's going to just rotate that on the Z axis. Now here's the key to all of this. This bone here is parented to this bone, meaning that when this also moves on the Y axis, it also gets that rotation. So you can see how these two locked track constraints 
are working together to give me that universal joint. So let's take this to the next step. Um, if I move this over to here, and I could even grab this and rotate this, and it's still going to lock to that area. What I can do now is grab this bone here and actually rotate it. So I'll come back to frame zero, and I'll key this here. I'll go to frame 60, and I'll just rotate it on the, not the x axes, not the z axes. I'll redo on the y axis by 360 degrees, and I'll key it. So now I got this. So it is a very simple universal joint using two constraints and right now five bones, but really only four because this one here is just a god bone to move the entire rig around. These can be extremely simple rigs. They do not need to be that complicated. Uh, you can find all my examples as well, as I mentioned on Gumroad. And so I can move this anywhere now, and I can move this as well too, and hit play and it's still going to work. You can check this too by seeing if there's any sliding happening here. And it looks like it's fine as well. So now you have a really fun universal joint and you can take this and add it to more complex characters as well, or more complex machinery. Okay, so let's talk about how you might rig a double joint here. So I've already rigged up the bottom piece here. And that's pretty much the exact same, it is the exact same rig from the single one. Um, I'm essentially just going to grab these three bones here and I'll flip to wireframe mode. I'm just going to duplicate them up to this area here. Now, to find this pivot, I can clip on this object here and just do Shift S, cursor to selection. I can grab these three bones down here, do Shift D. Oh, I've got to flip to edit mode, Shift D, do Shift S, selection to cursor. That moves it up there. It's not ideal, I'm just going to move it up, grab these two bones on their own, do Shift S, selection to cursor. And this one, I'm just going to move up to here now. So these constraints are already built for me. I just need to change a couple things. But let's parent these new pieces up first. So I'll grab on this piece. I'll do, I'll click back on this one, go to pose mode, click on the smaller bone, do control P, uh, bone parent for now. Click on this one up here, shift click on here, parent it to the bigger bone here, control P, bone. Now let's have the same constraints, but you'll notice that they're broken. That's because the way the pivot moves up here, we've switched axes. So this smaller bone has the Y and the X as the lock. We need to flip it to the Z. And this one, we need to flip it to the X because we've switched 90 degrees from here to here. So now I'm going to do one last thing. I'm going to parent this bone to this bigger one down here. I go to edit mode, do control P, keep offset. Now when I move this here and move this here, I can get that nice double transform. So I'll move this over to here. And again, it's a, it's a fairly simple setup just using locked track constraints. So I can move that around now. It's actually pretty funny. Um, I'm gonna go to frame zero. I'm just gonna key it, location, rotation, scale. I'll go to frame 60. I'll rotate it on the Y by 360 degrees and key it and play it through and we have that extension of the universal joint. The lock track is a great constraint. Um, it can seem confusing at first because you have two axes input here, but all you have to remember is the one you want to point it to and the axes you want it to rotate on. Um, it's great for doing stuff like this where you need really accurate constraints for a double rotation setup. Anyway, let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. And a huge thank you to my patrons for their continued support, uh, for supporting me and this channel. Uh, head over there if you want to see a couple extra tips and tricks and if you want to support this channel. And I'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.